lovelies. Welcome to the Flirting with Travel podcast. I'm Lexi. And I'm Misty. And today we're talking about packing for your trips. So enjoy. Today we'll be talking about packing. Packing is one of the most essential parts of a trip. It, it can, takes preparation. Yes. It can make or break. Um, so, like, you're in your whole type A. Packing is something that's very detailed for you. Do you, like really prep multiple weeks beforehand because you know they say there's two packers right mm-hmm. the the person that when they get back from the trip they unpack immediately which they think are murderers are the people that just leave their stuff in the suitcase so what kind of pack wait just unpacker? so i verify before i answer this who are the murderers the ones that unpack <laughs> or the ones that don't the ones that do oh shit right after a trip you unpack Man, five minutes in being home. The first thing I do is I pull out all of my packing cubes out of my bag. I dump everything into the laundry. Then I hop in the shower. And by the time I'm done with my shower and like feeding the dog, other stuff like that, then it's ready to go into the dryer. Then I get my stuff into the dryer. I take out all my toiletries, my makeup. I put them all away. Like this is within 30 minutes of being home. It's the first thing I do because I, I don't, I don't want to be unsettled by like having a bag in my floor because I'm back now. I want to be at home. I want to feel like I'm here. So yeah, I unpack within an hour of being home. It's like fully done. The bag is zipped up back in my closet in its space. (laughs) Okay, so um, totally opposite of you. My stuff stays in a suitcase forever. In fact, I probably have a suitcase in my house right now that's half packed that I probably picked out of. And You don't feel like weird about it? You don't feel like you're in transit? No, my entire life is in transit, so it's nothing different. Oh, well, like... No, I'll be in transit, but even when I get into a hotel, I take my stuff out of my bag and I hang everything. You're the suitcase. You're the drawer person. You know, so I haven't done drawers because I feel weird about that. There's something disgusting about a horizontal surface that doesn't bother me about hanging it. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm going to start like traveling with contact paper. <laughs> <laughs> you're one step away from that. So do you do you take your, so you don't take like your underwear, socks and that kind of stuff out of your suitcase or your backpack? No, so that, so here's what I will do. Mm -hmm. If there's big drawers, I'll open the drawer, put my backpack in, and then typically what I do is, like, I roll my underwear up nice and small, and I Mm -hmm. stick them in socks, and I usually put them in shoes. So then I'll take them out of the socks and then leave them in the backpack like it's the drawer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you completely unpack. You hang up all your stuff. Mm -hmm. Are you, like, a neat in your hotel room? This is actually deviating from how you pack. But are you in your hotel room, like, really neat? Like, you just... I'd like to believe yes. One, it's why I don't lose stuff when I'm on vacation. This is true. No shade, though. I know you lose things every vacation. I don't lose things because I leave them in the hotel room. I lose things because people steal from me. It's a difference. No, we were in London, and you definitely left a jacket hanging on the jacket hook. Because I used what she said. I used the coat rack in the house as Ah. a thing, and the lady lied to me and never mailed me my jacket back because she fit her. (laughs) Bitch. Well, either way, though, for me, I just... I I know that everything's hung up. So even like when I get done at the end of the day, mm-hmm. like I've been out and about, I decide, am I hanging it back here or am I folding it up and putting it in my laundry mm-hmm. bag? And so I do one or the other. So everything when I'm ready to repack is just neatly like, it's right here. And then I hang them by outfits too. Mm-hmm. So I get intense about my unpacking process because I think, well, something happens and I have to like get dressed real quick. Nothing ever happens. I was like, who's chasing you? <laughs> Nobody. Hold on, Freddie. I know you're trying to kill me, but let me coordinate and run out this door. (laughs) Yeah, but if I did need to coordinate, it's in outfits. Pants, shirt, necklace hanging on the uh, hanger with it. God forbid he killed you in like an unmatching ensemble. Is that how you want to die? I mean, I don't want to die. In bad underwear and a a bad outfit? No, I was raised better than that. Exactly. As was I, so I'd be like, hold on. (laughs) Pause. Get this together. (laughs) Okay, so packing, do you... Do you check weather? You only have one bag. You don't have a rollerboard bag. You don't ever check a bag. No. Ever since my uh, my backpacking experience, I actually have... No, I've checked a bag once in the last seven years. When did you check a bag? <sighs> Air France forced me to. I was in my oh, backpack. when we were leaving Paris, right? We were leaving Paris, and we were getting up there, and right yeah. before we went through security, they're like, hey, we have to weigh your bags. And it's every bag that you have, which for me is my purse and my backpack, and they needed to be under, I want to say it was like 18 kilograms, 18 ki- 
Yeah, because Paris does not play in the airport. They are serious. serious. And so I'm like, well, what does that translate to in pounds? Because if I can get an idea of pounds, and what it translated to was nothing. It translated (laughs) to one sock. It's times 2.2, so... Doesn't matter. So I'm in the airport in Paris thinking, just put on everything you can. So take (laughs) off your sneakers and put on these heavy-ass boots that you've carried and didn't wear because Paris really wasn't flooding like they told us it was flooding. And then I thought, that's fine. Just put on your jean jacket. I'm like, it's not enough. Weight's gone. Put on your leather jacket over your jean jacket. This is Paris in June. You know how hot Paris And Paris in does June get was? hot. London doesn't get hot. Mm-hmm. Paris was very warm. Yeah, so I'm like putting on as much stuff as I can. I'm holding my laptop in my hand like it's a baby, <laughs> just thinking, what can I take out of this bag? And I'm sweating. I'm and just, this is at the TSA or whatever they yeah, call their security. I'd like hopped right out of line and started redressing. And at the point that I was sweating and flustered, I thought, that's fine, I'm just gonna check this bag. But I also thought I'm gonna complain. And then thankfully, Sarah was next to me. She's like, hey, uh, you're traveling on non-rev. You can't complain or else you'll, you lose your flight benefits. Oh, this is true. Yeah. So I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got on my winter boots from Switzerland. So I took off all these extra clothes. <laughs> I put, put them back, back in, in my bag. bag. <laughs> and then I walked up to the counter and I was like, you know what? I'm a Sky Miles member. Right. I'm going to go up to this counter. And I was like, hey, I'm a Sky Miles member. And they're like, yeah, but you're not gold go to the regular person's line and I started sweating again because I'm like (laughs) you're making me check my bag it's hot as shit and now you're gonna tell me I ain't nobody (laughs) this is how you gonna do me it's how I felt were you silver at least silver were you silver silver I don't know I've only ever bought one ticket Oh, no, nope, we weren't even silver. I was you were just like literally a regular <laughs> yeah. flying. They just had gave no me status. a number. Yes. Oh, yeah, you were at the beginning. I don't even know what that is. Is that a color? It's not even a color. This is a member. <laughs> they don't, it's not even metal. It's like fiberglass or something. <laughs> <laughs> Carpet. Okay, so yeah. you were there. You had overpacked. So is yeah. that something you now take in consideration, how heavy your carry-on bag should actually be? Because I yes. remember you messaging me. And you're like, I can't get through. I, Tracy and I were... I think you guys were still enjoying life in Paris. We had one more day, you're right. Yeah, you were like out there living your best life. And I'm in the airport like sweating bullets and actual sweat. (laughs) And finally I just decided I'm going to go ahead and check this bag. And then I thought, I saw the connection on non-rev. What if my bag doesn't make it to me? And then I'm thinking, well, take out everything important. So now you got to put your laptop in your bag. So, <laughs> so your again, bag's sweating yes, and carrying all this stuff. It wouldn't end. So finally, I checked my bag and everything was fine. But that was like the first and last time I've had to check a bag. But to your point, I have really tried to work on the weight now. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying not to take as much stuff. So I stopped taking my laptop on trips unless I absolutely know I'm going to need to work while I'm there. Right. Wasn't that your work laptop and you did have to work. So that made it was. sense. Yeah. yeah. So, so normally what are the heaviest things in your bag? I don't know why, but the laptop, it starts as like five pounds when it's just sitting on your desk. But when you put it into your bag, it turns into <laughs> 50 pounds. I don't know what the science behind that is, but it gets heavier. So it was all the laptops fault. Yeah. And then I also had my uh, digital SLR camera. Okay. Which, again, starts off as a couple of pounds. Right. And then when you put it into your bag, it transfers into 100 pounds. Right. Weird magic. Um, other than that, usually shoes are like the heaviest thing. So now I limit myself to taking two pairs of shoes. And for this trip, I had taken, this was London and Paris. Mm-hmm. I had just taken a pair of like ballet flats that were right. no weight and then one pair of sneakers, and these were like the Nike like mesh top. They were super lightweight, could smash down to nothing. Mm-hmm. And then I brought these big ass Sorel boots because they were right. supposed to be for rain. Right. Right before we were going to London and Paris, we were told that it was flooding in Paris, and Remember that they the were the Seine River. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, they're evacuating the Louvre. We get there, and there's no rain. There's no water. Even. The boats were still going on the uh, river. It's like, well, we had to cancel one or two of the boat cruises. I'm like, oh, tragedy. (laughs) 
I'm going to get the fuck out of here. You made me bring these heavy ass <laughs> boots because you told me it was flooding. And you didn't wear them at all, ever. Mm-mm. I wore them one day and it was the first day I'd ever worn them. Oh, and your feet were sweating. Oh, it, they were painful. I and they were uncomfortable. But like, that's one of the things I think we, we tend to do. Like we watch the news, we hear mm-hmm. them say it's dangerous, it's dangerous. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like. Things are fine. So where was the river flooding? Where was the war at? Who was getting bombed? Who was stabbed? I mean, if there was, there was like a puddle and I could have hopped right over that in my sneakers. This is true. But that's just one of those things like you can't believe everything you hear. No. Because the media is made to sensationalize. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so I checked the weather. Well, not really. Do you check the weather? Yes. Because we went to Barcelona and we checked the weather, but it was really cold. Did you check the weather? I did. No, I check the weather intensively. I check it beforehand, and then I keep on checking it. Like, Did it just... tell you that it was like 20 degrees Fahrenheit? Oh, my goodness. No, it said that it was going to be up to like the high 80s in Granada, and then it was cold in Granada. So No, Granada, it was warm. It was cold in Barcelona. Barcelona was its own beast, because normally I bring a super functional wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be cute. In my mind, I want to be chic and I want to be fashionable. Right. But I also want to be functional. And so I decided to throw all of that out of the window for Barcelona. I thought, you know what? Instagram worthy. And I brought, like, these cute dresses. Everything was mm-hmm. summery and flouncy with, like, the thinnest material. Yeah. And, and then it was cold. Me. It was, like, 70 degrees. Yeah. And 70 sounds warm until you're in there with no material on. I yeah. think I actually had to go shopping. I had to buy a jacket. Mm-hmm. I had to buy a sweater, pants, and sneakers. What did I buy? I don't even understand what I packed for that trip. You bought apparently a wardrobe. I did. And I had room to put it in and not buy a second. No, I had to buy a secondary mm-hmm. bag. Can I say thank God for H&M? Yeah. H&M has saved me on many a vacation. Yeah. I like Zara. To, I like to think that Zara does it, but it doesn't. No, H&M is always going to be relatively good priced. They have everything. So, like, I had to buy a coat when I was in Munich Mm -hmm. because I thought the weather was going to be, like, high 70s, -hmm. and it ended up being high 50s, Mm. which is a real departure. So I had come with, like, shell jackets that are going to keep the wind out, but they're not going to do much more. Right. That's the one breaker. Mm -hmm. And then we said, oh, no, we're going to do this, like, nighttime um, beer crawl tour. And we were going to go to a bunch of uh, breweries and taste their beer. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing. (laughs) But the first thing the woman told us is, like, you don't want to be cold out here. Because the moment you're cold and you're drinking, you're going to have to go to the bathroom, like, every two minutes. And so we happened to be on a train earlier that day. And I saw, like, a shopping center. And it's like... Sharon, I'm going to let you keep on going. I'm going to hop out here and go get this coat. <laughs> they I don't want to be cold. <laughs> no. So we had been on a tour that morning, and it was like a 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. tour, and there was no sun, and I was just shivering like, ooh, yeah, that building's real nice. I like that. <sighs> so I, I got a coat from H&M, and now I like to consider it like my chic European coat, but at the same time, it's still an H&M coat. But right, right. So how you carry a was it ten buck two? Mm-hmm. Is it one or two? What's what the mean? number? It's a oh, two. Buck. It's a two. So you have a ten buck two, two, mm-hmm. and it is how many? How big is it? So it's about forty five liters is what it can hold inside of it, and. As backpack goes, backpacks go, it's super small. So, you know when, like, people are saying, oh, I'm carrying my backpack, you usually think of those bright, like, blue or orange, massive. Oh, the big, yeah. Yeah, that's, like, above your that's head. That's brand. It's, uh... I want to say Jansport, but I know it's not. No, no. It's nowhere near that. Uh... could have been. But that yeah. is not what I carry. So, my backpack is... What, when I was shopping for it, and it took me a while to buy a backpack, because right. I was like, I want something that doesn't look like a tourist. So Mm -hmm. I didn't want any bright colors. So mine is just like all gray and black and it's small. So it just hits like to the top of my shoulders and then right above, like right at my hips. Mm -hmm. It's not overly big. It has handles on all sides, which I love because you can just pick it up in any way and move it around. Mm -hmm. And it's a front zip. So, you know, which is actually very important Mm -hmm. because it's accessible, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, because normally with backpacks, you're like stuffing shit in there. And when you have to pull something out, it's always at the very bottom of your backpack. Except for your laptop. Except for my laptop. (laughs) That 50 pounds is just hanging out at the top like wink, wink. 
we're here. So you use we use packing cubes. Those mm-hmm. are a, a must. Always. God save. You should never pack in a backpack without a packing cube. I would agree. So what I will say is if you were trying to fit everything in, packing cubes are not your friend because they do limit you. They keep you into a perfect square. But what I found is that I have a lot fewer embarrassing moments at TSA with my packing cubes. Because, you know, like you open your bag and it's suddenly all underwear all day at the top. And they're like, well, we thought we saw tweezers. <laughs> I don't want that situation. So right. instead I've got like my packing cubes and you can pull stuff out. Because then they like to pull everything out and you're like, oh, let me get my shit back in here. Right. So instead do. it's like, let me just put my three packing cubes in and zip it up. And packing cubes are sold in three. In packs of three normally. Mm-hmm. Small, medium, large. Yeah, but the large is too big for, like, a small backpack. So True. If, yeah, if I was taking a check bag, I could use my large packing cube, but pretty much I limit everything to, like, my medium and my small. And really what I do is I put, like, all of my main clothes in the medium, and then in the small one I'll do um, pajamas, my little nightcap, because mm-hmm. i got to keep the little mushroom cloud on me at all times, mm-hmm. um, bras, things like that. So I have a Manal, Manal um, backpack. Mm-hmm. Did not come with hip flaps, which is a really big... Uh, where were we? We were somewhere, and you were just like, oh, my bag is heavy. And I'm like, yeah, my fucking bag is heavy, too. And then you just went and snatched your hip flaps in. And I'm like... I always feel like the biggest nerd. God, I wish I had fucking hip oh, flaps. I love those. Because you look like such a tourist when you put on your hip flaps. Because you know shit just got real. But I'm like, <laughs> strap in my hip flaps, pull it nice and tight, and then it has little chest straps. I have a chest strap. Yeah. But doesn't that make a difference? Once you have it up there, it's not even on your shoulders. But you know what? Does your bag have a frame? Because it if it has a frame, that adds weight to your bag. I don't yeah. have a frame. Which... I always think, oh, that probably sounds so nice not having a frame because then, like, I've we've traveled together. So we went to Cuba for what? I swear nine, it was only 10 days, days. But whatever. Anywhere within that time, it was over nine days, and we both only took our backpacks and yes. one bag. Right. And everyone else is there with, like, their massive checked bags right. and their backpacker backpacks. And we're just there, and they're like, where's the rest of your stuff? And I was like, this is it's it. It's right here. Yeah, it's all I'm like, that. that's it? Yeah, but I loved seeing how you were able to fit stuff in your bag, because when you had something, you're like, oh, I just have one more thing, and I need to fit it in. Yours was flexible enough that you could right. get it there. But I also didn't use packing cubes that trip. Yeah. I used um, lingerie bags, so the small net mesh lingerie bags with the zip on the and top. Moved. And it does give you a bit more space, but... I mean, I alternate between that and packing cubes. I might try that on my next trip because I've been consistently using my packing cubes. And the thing about the Timbuktu bag is that I love how structured it is, Mm -hmm. but you're not like, I'm just going to fit this one more thing in here because the bag's like, no, the fuck you are not. (laughs) It's it. Yeah. I got a nice little D-ring so I can clip stuff on the outside of my bag. Ah, you know, that's a good idea. I I don't have much stuff to clip except maybe like an umbrella because... I noticed on my last vacation, I bought about 10 umbrellas on vacation. And you're going to continue to buy umbrellas. I'm trying to keep them with me, but the funny thing is, I bought an umbrella when I was in Switzerland a couple weeks ago, Mm -hmm. because again, found myself without it, and it's raining nonstop all day. So I do that, and then we're in Chicago, and I'm like, I'm bringing this umbrella with me. And then Put it in my bag. Yeah, but then it starts raining, and we're out, and the umbrella is sitting safe in and my sound bag. in my hotel <laughs> in my bag. But you remember when we went to um, Amsterdam, and mm-hmm. we were outside, and we were about to go to the, was it MoMA? MoCo Museum. MoCo, and it just was like, okay, it's great, it's great, it's great, and then just poured down rain. Yes. So we ran to the store to get the, like, the little out shop. We get mm-hmm. the umbrella, we step outside, and guess what it does? Stops raining. Waste of five euro. You know what, though? I like that umbrella. It's adorable because it says, like, Amsterdam and it has a little bicycle, which is just, like, the unofficial thing of Amsterdam. Right. So, it's super cute. I haven't used it since then. So, because you pack and unpack for every Mm -hmm. trip, you always start from scratch. I do. Like, I'd love to go shopping in my closet and find stuff, but in my heart, I always feel like that's never enough. Right. So, I think, we're starting fresh. We're building this wardrobe for this trip. So normally what I do is it's all Pinterest. Uh I I have a deep-seated love for Pinterest. And so what I'll do is look up, like, 
street fashion in Barcelona and then see what people are looking at or what people are wearing. Mm -hmm. But then I'll also look at like historical pack, like historical outfits Mm -hmm. in Barcelona and then also look at what to pack for Barcelona. Because there's all kinds of lists with everything you should wear and then some of them are viable, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll put all of those together and then it gets down to what is going to fit in my bag. So anytime I'm packing, I usually... Do you pre-pack? Are you one of those people that go and pre-pack before the pack to see if everything will fit? Yeah, I will. I, I've done that before. No, like packing is an intense process. The moment I know I'm going somewhere, like I've decided, mm-hmm. the packing has started even before the planning has started. Mm-hmm. Like I could probably plan a trip in a weekend for a week-long trip, but the packing process takes like a month for me at least. So I think I differ from you. I have to keep in mind that I'm going to do a trip, right? I'm like, okay, you're going to go somewhere. You're going to go somewhere. So if I do have to order clothes, Mm -hmm. I have enough time because I do live overseas and it's like an additional 10 days. I'm always like surprised at how stuff, how fast stuff comes in America. (laughs) I'm like, damn, this shit is fast. But, um, so I have to keep that in mind. But I normally have suitcases that are already packed from a previous trip because I'm not an unpacker. I just move stuff around from different suitcases and depending mm-hmm. on where I'm going, I have several different, I have a small roller board. Well, now I have two small roller board bags. Mm-hmm. Um, then I have the medium size bag. I have my backpack. Um, and then I have like a little long chat bag or, mm-hmm. cause I always take two just for, to- that's what we should really talk about. <clears throat> I, I pack, a across multiple things. I never unpack. Mm-hmm. I literally take from one suitcase Things that I take my dirty clothes out. Okay, so when I do come back from a trip, <laughs> they just hang out. I do take my dirty clothes out, mm-hmm. right? I throw them in the, the pile. But typically, anything that I didn't wear, or maybe not even clothes that I didn't wear, but shoes, the toiletry bags. I have several different toiletry bags. Oh, gotcha. For different types of packing apparatus. Because you use one backpack for any, any trip. I do. Regardless. Yeah, and so I have, like, my one toiletry bag. So when I get home, what I typically do, like, after I've done my shower and before I'm putting it up, is I'll open it and make a list of anything that needs replacing. So do you continuously use the um, the, the three-ounce bottles? Or do you buy, yeah. like, I guess, like, soap? The travel to, size. Yeah, um, the travel size stuff to put in your bag. So I'm trying to minimize my liquids mm-hmm. because... Going through uh, Switzerland, they have this bag. It all has to fit into one plastic bag. Really? And they're serious. Like, I had my liquids in different places. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hey, uh, you got pulled aside. And she literally pulled out every liquid I had and was putting it in there. And I felt so much judgment because it was all makeup, really. And so typically, right. I've got, like, my makeup bag and then my toiletries. So mm-hmm. now I'm trying to minimize what I bring. So I started using, like, bar soap. So I'm either using the soap at the hotel or bar soap. So I have like one less liquid. Which means you stay in a three star or above. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have like my lotion and I just have it in a little thing and I just like pump it in there. So when I get home, just like refill it. Right. Because I don't want to have to keep on buying that. It feels bad for the environment. And I'm not like that great about the environment, but that's something that I can do. You hate water running. I do hate water running. It just reminds me that we're in a drought and people somewhere don't have clean water and we're literally just wasting it. That it hurts my soul to just hear water going. (laughs) Okay, so So, you refill. So you have bar mm -hmm. soap, you have... Um, My lotion, I'll just refill. I can't find a better way to do that. And then I try and minimize other things. So like... I've been, my last couple of trips I've gone with braids, so I do take braid spray. Mm-hmm. But then that means I don't need shampoo and I don't need conditioner, mm-hmm. so thankful for that. But Lush has dry soap, uh, dry shampoo bars. Mm-hmm. I don't think they have the conditioners, though. They don't. Nah. And I'm, I'm kind of afraid to use a dry shampoo bar because there's something, like, wearing my hair natural, there's something that kind of freaks me out about trying right. to, like, rub it in my hair. I um I brought that when we went to Cuba because I was trying yes. to cut down my loop. Yeah, it was a terrible idea. Right? It's not, it's not made for naturals. No, I think there's some people that totally yeah. need to use that. It just wasn't me. Right. I should have tried the, doing, the, like, the shea butter bar and moving it in my hair. Maybe that would have been good. Yeah, it probably would have been difficult because the water pressure wasn't even good. No, it was... Yeah, that would have been hard. So how do you do perfume? Because I think that's like the hardest thing because they come in large bottles. Mm -hmm. You can't pour it into another bottle. So do you buy travel size perfume? No, 
I just have to give up on smelling like real delicious on vacation. <laughs> it's all about just yeah. my natural pheromones. I mean, I've brought shampoo with me, but I brought this one and it started leaking and I was so mad because like per ounce of what you're buying, right. perfume is probably more expensive than gold. Wow. Well, no, when you think like... If yeah. you look at most things, perfumes are like one ounce. You and know what you I could do? be spending a hundred dollars on it. I take if you buy perfume, they give you like all those little testers. Oh, they're like the little ones, and they give mm -hmm. the little sprays. I just take those and I put them in my bag. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. Yeah, then I could spray myself, and mm. I mean, you're never gonna use it any other way. How would you yeah. use that? I've bought perfume on vacation a time or two because I thought, oh, I really because you can this. carry it back. Yeah, yeah, but then you have the issue because if it's three ounces, oh my god, that happened to me. I was in Dubai. Really? I had brought my um, Chanel Chance, mm -hmm. and I, when I packed up, I had checked the bag. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I checked my bag going. I don't know, but I had to carry it back, mm -hmm. and I had missed the check-in for the bag to go through, and the lady was just like, no. I'm like, bitch, it is five minutes. What the fuck you mean, no? Like, I didn't buy the ticket, and I'm a tier member with you. She was like, nah, flight's closed. I was like, just open it back up. It's five minutes. Five minutes. And she was like, she was so serious about her no. And, and I, I work for an airline, so five minutes is five minutes. <sighs> like, did that gate close? Did, did check-in close? You were Apparently check-in closed. So I was like, I looked at the bottle. It said 3.6 ounces. I'm like, Jesus. Ooh, that's iffy. Because some people won't catch that, but then some people are militant. Will. Yes. So I was just like, I'm going to have to take my chances. And if I have to throw it away, maybe, you know, I'll have a fit. Mm -hmm. But... I was able to get it through. They didn't catch 3.6. Yeah. But some people in like, I went to Greece and mm -hmm. when I was going to Santorini, they were serious about the three ounce rule. They are. So some places, like I've flown through a lot of places, they don't care. And I'll try and like separate my stuff. So I have my makeup, which has its liquids. And then I have my, my um, just toiletries, which has its liquids. And mm -hmm. I try to keep them separate because mm -hmm. I figure, oh, they're not going to catch it. But some places are like, no, go ahead and put it in one bag. Yeah, Europe doesn't play about their security though. Mm -mm. <laughs> they have a different level. The, different, the Arab countries are a little bit more lax. Yeah, but then trying to think about like makeup. How do you even cut down on your liquids? I suppose I could get like powder foundation, but I don't feel like travel is the time when you start experimenting with new things. But you can get the like the smaller, a lot of um, makeup does come three ounces, True. really close to it. Well, it's not even that it's bigger than three ounces. Cause I realized I had like a can of setting spray yeah. and it's the uh, continuous aerosol, setting though. mist. It is an aerosol. I was like, oh, I can never take this with me. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh, it's only like 2.8 fluid ounces. I can take this with me. However, they did, they pulled it out and they looked at it like, oh, are we going to let you take this? Because I don't think you can take aerosol cans. So that's one of the yeah. things I think like when you're packing and you're doing carry-on mm -hmm. burst check bag, team carry-on is, it's the, it's the ease of moving through the airport mm -hmm. really quickly, right? Yeah. Because you land, you're off the plane, mm -hmm. go through immigrations. Ooh, I love passing people up that are sitting at baggage claim. Right. Like, what's up? Right. So that's the thing. So I have a couple rollerboard bags and then I have my backpack. Mm -hmm. And depending on the trip, if it's like a stationary trip, I'll take a rollerboard. For instance, we were in Amsterdam going to Bruges, which mm -hmm. is in Brussels. We were going by train and I ended up finding these shoes I loved. Remember mm -hmm. how cute those shoes were? They were real. I tried to find them for you again. Crinkles is a Belgian brand and they don't sell it anywhere else. No, you can't. You cannot get it. Yeah, really cute shoes. They're brand new, but my I had, so what I had did was I was packed for another trip with my boyfriend and then I didn't unpack the bag because I was like, oh, I'm going to cold weather. Mm -hmm. It still has the same things. Rookie mistake. But traveling with others or traveling, not traveling with, uh, yeah, not traveling while other, but traveling with others. We all travel differently. Mm -hmm. So when you and I travel, we don't really go out at night. I had heels in there. I was completely packed incorrectly for our trip. I had shit just taking up space. So I bought those beautiful shoes and couldn't put them in my bag. And I had to make a decision. Do I take my Louboutin's heels out to put these crinkles in? And so then How we mad went, would you have been if you had lost I'm Louboutin's? I'm pissed. Livid. I my mean, you were already at about a nine just losing I those shoes. I was going to cry getting off the train, right? I was like, what the fuck? And I couldn't go back. They were so just we're on a train platform and mind you because she bought these shoes at crinkles they gave her a free umbrella and i'm talking like a full-size umbrella it was a full-size dancing in the rain yeah. what's that that dancing in the rain and then yeah. like the the round singing in the rain yeah singing in the rain right i had that umbrella 
But it was a cute umbrella. But the thing is, is that she had her backpack, and then you were supposed to buy the Longchamp bag, but you decided, I don't want to spend, like, $90 on this bag. So we went to H&M, and we both got, like, a little $30 bag. H&M, what to say? Mind you, I love mine. I actually carry it. No, I use my bag all the time. It's a nice bag. However, it, wasn't big enough. it was too small. I couldn't fit the shoes. What was it? Could I not fit the... Did I want to keep the box? What was the stupid reason we that I do this? We bought a lot of stuff. Yes. Because that's... I mean, like, it's the hardest thing is when you're carry-on. Mm-hmm. You're trying to pack everything yeah. into that bag. And then think about it. Like, when you're leaving, you didn't leave enough space. Mm-mm. So how do you, like, how do you account for space? Because you're very specific. How do you make sure that you have space to bring stuff back for people? I plan out my airport outfits. So I always plan that I'm wearing the biggest stuff on the plane. Uh. So for me, if I have a thick sweater, even if it's like 100 degrees on that plane, I'm going to have to wear that thick sweater so I can free up space in my bag. Although I have learned layering is actually smart. And I don't need to bring thick sweaters because I had brought like three big sweaters right. to um, to Amsterdam. And once I got there, I realized midday, it's hot. And I was like sweating and just shiny in all my photos. I thought, why did you bring the sweater? Like big sweaters only work when you're at home. So instead, right. you just layer it up. But in that instance, you just put on everything that you can to free up space. But I also don't buy anything big. So, like, my personal things that I buy for myself, I buy jewelry. Mm-hmm. That's because small, yeah. Because it's small, you can bring it back, I'm going to use it, and I'm going to remember it from that time that I went to th- that place. Yeah. If I'm getting stuff for other people, like, magnets are good. I stopped doing keychains, because how many keychains can you have? Um, right. Chocolates. So, the last couple, like, we've been to a few, like, really popular chocolate places. Mm-hmm. So I brought back chocolates from Switzerland and chocolates from Belgium. And those are relatively small, except they're kind of fragile. Yeah. Um, other things, like in Spain, I got someone a little mirror that opened up and they use it. So it's usable and it's not like extra shit that they have now. So it's all just small stuff that you can kind of stick yeah. in it. So right. No because, one's getting anything elaborate. You know what? Remember when we were in London... I think this is one of the things that you should consider when packing in a cold weather space. And mm-hmm. you, you touched on this, I think, in another episode. But it is remembering that if you are going to take pictures to bring outer layers that you change often. Yes. As opposed to your tops. Because, like, if you have one scarf and one jacket, that's all you see most of the time. So you have to be even really careful with that. So when I think about London, not even London, when I think about Amsterdam... I had one black coat and I brought a bunch of like sweaters and shirts and then I realized it's cold. So every picture I took, I'm wearing the same black coat. Right. So imagine if you had brought a bunch of different jackets. Mm -hmm. Well, then I thought, okay, I'm going to switch it up. So Switzerland, I brought like a cute little like leather like jacket Uh and then my trench coat. Uh I'm like, this is great. Except I was traveling by myself. So I, I put it like this for me. I don't really give my phone to people to take my picture. Like, hey, can you take my picture? Because I think if they took off and ran with it, am I in shape to catch up with them? (laughs) And the answer is usually no. Right. Like, I'll go to the gym and walk on an incline on a treadmill, but I'm not running, so clearly I'm not going to catch this person. Right. I just assume that it's like Flojo running away. Right. So with that in mind, I'm like, well, I'm not giving my phone to anyone. I'm just like taking a picture right here. So then even though I had different jackets in Switzerland, I realized I only brought one scarf. So then, but that's suddenly, what I'm saying. You got to make sure you bring your different accessories. Yeah, you have to accessorize. It's about earrings. It's about mm-hmm. hats. It's about shadows for your eyes. And I mean, if you were just yeah. like wanting to have those, I always give girls props that have like all the other stuff. But packing with hats is the worst. But then there, there's no way that you can like carry on and carry all that stuff. Like, no. If you can do it, message us. Let us know how you're doing it because like. Well, I've seen some Pinterest boards, and one thing, like, that I've seen a few of them have, it's, like, bring a white t-shirt and a black t-shirt, and then you bring in, like, two jackets and a bunch of scarves. However, I guess the scarves would change it up, right? It would, but then, like, do you do laundry on vacation? If I am in an Airbnb, yes. Mm -hmm. If I am in a hotel, not really, um, unless I'm there for a long time. So, like, Switzerland, I washed a bunch of my stuff in the sink, and... I couldn't get it to dry to save my life. It's because it's cold. 
It, right. <laughs> but I was thinking, I was like, man, if I had only brought like two t-shirts, because for that trip, I brought a pair of jeans, a pair of pants, and a skirt. Right. All the bottoms that I had. And I was there for seven, like seven days, including travel total. And then tops wise, I had a turtleneck, one sweater, and one other shirt. But didn't you go to Vancouver? How was it packing for Vancouver? I was only there for a weekend, so that was easy. Because it was only two days? Yeah. Okay. When you're doing that, it's fine. Just throw some stuff in a bag. You're going to make it work. But when you have seven days and you're taking into account daytime stuff, mm -hmm. and at some point you're going to go to dinner mm -hmm. and you're going to want to look nice, then it gets a little dicey. So I only had like three bottoms, three tops. Well, now I've got to mix it up. And so... Then I realized, oh, I'm wearing the same top like three times. And it's one and you thing. you have to wash it, right? Yeah. Didn't we, we wash in London? We did. So yeah. we had a uh, washing machine and drying lines, which made all the difference in the world. Because I've washed, I always bring little Tide packs on vacation. I washed in Spain. I washed the night before we left in Portugal. This is true. Because if you bring six or seven pieces, mixed matchable, they say it's supposed to get you about 20 outfits. And it totally does. If you don't mind wearing the same stuff over and over again, but it's different when you're out traveling because you're walking and you're sweating mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, the second time I put this on, it felt disgusting. Well, it is about layering because yeah. if you have like, so the outfit you have on right now, mm -hmm. this is, could be three pieces with a pair of jeans yeah. and another jacket because mm -hmm. the dress could be itself with the jacket, the t-shirt or the, the, the turtleneck with jeans, the turtleneck and the dress. That's, so that's yeah. already three right there. No, you can totally make it work. To, uh, to not have to take a bunch of stuff. Right. So one thing I stopped doing is I stopped taking anything just in case. So for me, if I don't think I'm going to use it twice, it doesn't come with me. So, I mean, you've been on trips with me. You mm -hmm. know that every time after a vacation, like toward she, the end of a vacation. She starts going through her packing list. She's like, okay, yeah. so I was bringing this and maybe I don't really need that. Mm -hmm. I write down lists. I, You're a list fanatic. I am. I love lists. They just, they really hit my heart in a way that few things do. Lists so, are right there. Mm -hmm, lists. Just top of that list is lists. Okay. Yep. So I'll write down the stuff that I took, and I always think about how many times did I use it. And right. if I didn't use it at least two times, then what I'll do is I write a secondary list <laughs> of what I would have brought instead. Right. Well, here's what I do. I bring a list of what I used, or a list of what I brought, how many times did I use it? Then I do a second list of mm -hmm. um, what would I have skipped and then a third list of what would I have brought instead. Right. So basically any trip that I take, in my mind, I'm packing for it at least twice. The real time that I went and if I had it to do again. And then sometimes, so like when I went to uh, Switzerland, I was supposed to be going to Slovenia, whole different situation. But I actually looked at my list from Amsterdam to figure out what worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. And it did find how I didn't bring big sweaters because in Switzerland, like the two trips that I feel like I've packed the best for in my life are mm -hmm. going to be Cuba mm -hmm. for hot weather and Switzerland for cold weather. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, like I had one day in Switzerland where I was just freezing my ass off in the Alps. However, I hadn't anticipated going to the Alps. Right. But even then a half day of discomfort is worth not carrying a bunch of shit on your back. This is true, but you also are only in one hotel in that, that one. True. But then like Cuba, we were, we stayed in five different places true. over the course of that time. And what did I bring for that? I brought two pairs of shorts, one pair of pants, mm -hmm. and three tops. And a pair of leggings. Oh, and a pair of leggings. But those leggings were like my pajamas. True. So I did double duty with the leggings because we did have our clothes washed. So I wore the leggings out and I also wore them to sleep in. And a fleece. Mm, I felt like you had more clothes, but maybe you didn't. Mm -mm. You sure? Yeah. But that was good, like, packing. Because a lot of the faux pas you're saying, the things that you actually failed on are all for, like, cold weather. So hot mm -hmm. weather trips. How many hot... Do you not take hot weather trips or something? You know what? I can't take hot weather trips because mosquitoes. Those tend to be the, my worst trips. In fact, my best and worst trips, all <laughs> of my worst were in hot weather places. Because you Rome. don't like bugs. Yeah. Because when you go somewhere hot, all you're going to get are insects. When you go to cold weather places, you might see a couple of spiders. Like I saw one spider in my hotel room in Switzerland. I told them about it. They got that situation figured out. Right. I don't know what they did, but they got it figured out. But after, like, in cold weather places, there's no insects. There's no wildlife. 
So do you travel during the, the summer? You know, I take a trip every June. You do for your birthday. June. And London was hot. London was cold. Mm -hmm. Let's see, where else did we go? We went to Barcelona, which was cold. Mm -hmm. Went to Cuba, which was hot. Yeah. Got attacked by mosquitoes. True. Um, where else? No, Rome was hot. Worse, yeah, it was but what it was one of your best trips. That was one of my best trips. But you were dressed for winter. I was dressed for winter, so those bugs couldn't get to me. Oh, uh, okay. I had so, no school I mean, skin. I guess for me, then I travel. I like warm weather. The bugs don't bother me, and I think it's the easiest way to pack is during the summer because you're literally wearing little. The, all the clothes you're wearing are, are small. So, but are they mix and match though in the summer? It depends. I mean, you could do a romper. I like rompers. Dresses. I like maxi Ooh, dresses. Rompers though. I love rompers. Until you have to get naked in a public bathroom. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're in a warm spot, they're only going to your knees, and you just have to, like, first off, you're not sitting on the toilet, you squat. Thick thighs save lives. Do your squats, people. Get your squats in. I guess, but wait till you have, like, that little gap in the door, and suddenly you're standing there in your bra, <laughs> and someone's walking by. Yeah, you just gotta accept that. But, I mean, I think it's easier. And then, so, I would say, always use packing cubes or a lingerie bag, some kind of organizational system for mm. your suitcase to maximize... Leave a little space for what you might buy because I am a person that ends up buying a bunch of stuff on a, a trip. I buy clothes. That's what I do. do um, every trip. I also always pack a secondary bag because mm -hmm. say your suitcase or your backpack runs out of space, you can pop out this extra bag and you have more space now. That way you can stop losing stuff because I lose stuff all the time. Total truth. Now what about hair though? A well, different beast. Yeah, hair is a different beast. Like if I'm wearing... Braids, you have to bring nothing. If I wear wigs, it's much easier. I wore my hair one time. I wore my hair a couple times on trips, and I think that's the worst thing that you can ever do. I feel like wearing your natural hair. I'm talking about natural, kinky hair on a trip that's not humid. So tough. It's so difficult. Even with humidity. So the last vacation I wore my hair out was Cuba. That was like years ago, though. It was years I haven't repeated that experience since. Because <laughs> then you have to bring creams and yes. gels, and then you have to detangle, and then you have to have your conditioners to co-wash. Because I ran out of hair products halfway through that trip. You did. I still have my Ziploc bag full of it because the Ziploc bag is squishy. Mm -hmm. No, she was doing great. I had run out of hair products, and I was trying to figure out how to make it work, and I thought, the humidity is going to be on my side. <laughs> Right, but my hair was like shrinking and like this little cotton ball thing. It was horrid. Well, mine was bleached at the time, so I wish it would have shrank. It was like frizzy, 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 straight. Right. So I guess like for packing, you just have to remember where you're going, check out the weather, mm -hmm. um, have an idea of what you want to do so you're dressed for those activities. If you're going to go in churches, you need to have your shoulders covered. Mm -hmm. Temples, you have to have your, your shoulders covered. Definitely check the the cultural yeah. things because like when we went to thailand and they gave you all that stuff to cover up because you're out there dressing like a hussy i was dressing for like 2000 degree weather it was hot and then yeah. they gave you like a hawaiian shirt to wear and <laughs> right wrong so imagine you want to take a picture and i'm in i don't even think we took pictures there huh you know, we took a couple, but you know what's funny? I was just coming from Japan for that, and in Japan... Oh, you like, wore sweaters, yeah. Yeah, people dress. I looked at a picture of me on the Great Wall, and I was like, man, I was in, like, peak Japanese wear. <laughs> I was wearing shorts with, uh, like, tight leggings under it. Right. Now, mind you, I was in Beijing in April, and it was hot. And then I had on a t-shirt and then a sweater over it. Right. And, like, little socklets coming up. I, I had on so many clothes, and I love it because all of them were different colors, and I was like, I'm just out here. Very, I went to Tokyo to visit you, but it was warm. It was cold. It was in January. Yeah, it was cold. So I had to buy a jacket there because I didn't have a jacket. Or did no, I you came with that big, white, fluffy jacket. Oh, I did. Right, but it is different. It's like being, I live in Kuwait, so you have to always have some kind of shawl. Mm -hmm. I mean, lately, I've just been like, fuck it. It is what it is. I'm American. Yeah. America. Well, yes, but I do feel like you have to look at where you're going. Because even in Japan, one thing I realized when I got there is that in the U.S., I wear tank tops no problem. But there, short skirts are fine, but bare arms is kind of unusual. So even when I got back to the U.S., right. I felt awkward having my arms out for like the first six months. And if you're traveling and you don't want to be stared at and you're trying to figure out like, why is everybody looking at me? If you're outside of societal mm -hmm. norms. Yes then you're going to start feeling uncomfortable. And that's a tip that you should always remember if you're traveling solo. Yeah. Because they're going to look at, there's certain things, you're black, they're going to look at you. If you have your natural hair out, you're going to get looked at. You might even get, like, snatched. 
But, you know, it's always nice that if your hair is fully loaded with product, that their hand comes out like, uh, That's my favorite. I was like, Coconut I bet you don't like what you just felt. Because I just, I just dropped a whole bottle of olive oil in my hair. Are you enjoying that now? Right. Like, what is this? What Especially is this? because they're super confused by what Why is, is it so drippy? Why is it wet? <laughs> right. But, I mean, so those are like, I like team carry-on. I think you should, I really feel like you should only check a bag if you're going for like three weeks. Yeah. It's or hard to pack you're gonna for. Buy something else. Honestly, I think I could do three weeks in my backpack though. But not if you were trying to be like super chic multiple days and you had, you had different levels of events. If you had yeah. dinner and then like you had different things that you had to pack for, you wouldn't, you wouldn't carry on. I actually think I would. It's a matter of how much laundry can I do. So then it's uh, really creating. So say I'm going to do three weeks in a carry on. Then I decide I'm going to pick one color scheme. So normally I pick a color scheme. It's like blue and tan or right. like most recently I did black and maroon. But for that, I would just do all black. And then you have to throw in prints. Oh, no, even in that situation, I would just do straight up black all time because then that way you always look chic. You always look like slender and slim and you have your look going right so i mean it just you have to know where you're packing for where you're going what you're doing um and like anticipate those things like spur the moment trips don't it's like a little bit harder yeah just be prepped that's all but packing is a skill packing is something that you have to it takes time it is it's a, it's a work in art work in progress and an art form that's what i meant an art form <laughs> she's got me um, but that is all on our packing. I hope you enjoyed and you were able to pick up some things that help you, you know, like do better. So we have some epic fails. I hope you Hashtag have, team carry on. have more success than we do. Um, have a great day.